Welcome to the panel discussion at the MariaDB server Minifest December 2020 edition. Our topic still remains the MariaDB release schedule and the plan was to take all the presenters and all the interviewers and contrast the various starting points and vantage points against each other. But since the speakers represented time zones from Canberra, Singapore, Cape Town, various places in Europe, and on both US coasts. Not everybody could make it to the joint recording time. So if you've seen the six, six slots before this panel, you know that half of them were internal by MariaDB people, and the other half was external with Debian, Microsoft, and DBS Bank representing various user constituencies. So all of those slots were about how we work now and how it is seen by our users. We got some kudos on this. This, of course, gives us a great feeling. The MariaDB Foundation obviously wants more users and current users saying that they're happy with MariaDB server is a great testimony. But the purpose of this panel is different. This is about getting feedback on what we can do better. And that's why I would like to first welcome Giuseppe Mascia to our panel. Welcome, Giuseppe. Do we have Giuseppe? Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Happy to. So you're here in the role of Jiminy Cricket. So for those who do not know Pinocchio in English, you might know him as Grillo, Parlante, Benjamin Sirsa, or Jiminy Grille. Anyway, he's the conscience of, of Pinocchio. So Giuseppe, when we discussed earlier, you mentioned customer satisfaction surveys where producers keep asking question after question to customers along the lines of, please tell us how much uh, you love us and little about uh, what uh, what, uh, li little questions around the nature of what do you need from us? And, and I think this is the guiding star of this, this discussion. So you, Giuseppe, are the father of uh, MySQL Sandbox, now known as DB Deployer. Can you say a sentence or two about that? Um, yes, DB Deployer is a tool that allows you to deploy several um, instances of a database server that uh, looks and feels like MySQL. So MySQL, Percona Server, MariaDB, um, NADB cluster, uh, Percona um, ExtraDB cluster. So you can uh, deploy several copies of that uh, in the same host, mostly for the purpose of testing. Okay. So uh, you, Giuseppe, watched all the presentations, perhaps not Otto's on Debian, but, but most of them anyway. Did you learn anything new from them that you didn't already know? Yes, I learned that uh, MariaDB is uh, mm, testing on macOS. This was news to me because I, I've been asking for a package uh, uh, a tarball for um, Mac OS since the early days of uh, MySQL uh, Sandbox and DB Deployer now. And I was always told uh, we don't have such facility. So I'm puzzled by the fact that uh, you have uh, builds of uh, MariaDB server for testing in uh, Mac OS, but you don't release uh, such tarballs or such builds uh, in any format. Mm -hmm. um, Good, so I will late, later on let you, uh, Pinocchio's conscience, ask the other panelists a few questions, but while you are thinking about what you would want to ask them, I have some questions of my own. And my first question then goes to present uh, another uh, panelist here another special guest on the panel who hasn't presented so far, and that's Elena Stepanova working for MariaDB Corporation and doing quality assurance. So Elena, is there other testing 
applied on a new MariaDB server releases beyond MTR, the MariaDB test run? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, we have several uh, different uh, setups for testing. First of all, uh, Billboard doesn't just run MTR tests, it also runs different kinds of tests, uh, installation and upgrade specifically for packages of different kinds. Secondly, our uh, in-team testers perform ad hoc testing of different uh, bug fixes, non-trivial bug fixes, which uh, developers deem to be a little bit too risky to push directly into main trees. So uh, they need some additional, uh, re for example, random or stress testing or load testing. Uh, or maybe even manual testing of some kind. And uh, also I run a fairly big, of, a big set of regression tests. My setups combined run about 10,000 uh, test runs a day. Mm. It translates into roughly 500 test hours a day on uh, all uh, main branches. Uh, so, about 90% of that is feature integration tests of different kinds, different combinations of features, not all at once, but uh, uh, parts of them together. And the rest are data upgrade tests, which are different from package upgrade tests, uh, Maria backup and crash recovery tests. Over 10,000 tests a day, there's only 86,400 seconds every day, so there's, that's more than one test every 10 seconds. So, um, uh, I have a generic question, very, very uh, um, much directed from anybody in the community, and perhaps it's to be answered by you, Elena, or perhaps by Sanya. So, what should I do if I, despite all the testing that goes around, if I find a bug in MariaDB server? as a user of MariaDB, what should I do? Oh, surely you should report it, but uh, what we need, uh, I assume that you don't just want to uh, make people know that you have found a bug, but you actually want it fixed. And if, if it's the case, uh, what we need is the ways to reproduce it most of all. Because we appreciate all uh, notifications of uh, bugs that users encounter, but realistically, uh, the only useful ones are those which we can actually fix. So when users just dump a crash report from the uh, MariaDB error log, they don't do anything wrong because uh, the error log actually tells them to do so, to report a bug uh, to MariaDB. But uh, from the usefulness point of view, it's uh, pretty low because we cannot do much about it. What we need is uh, to know what we uh, have to do to repeat this issue. Uh, then we can confirm it and uh, then it uh, will have high chances to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so um, Sanya, you, you did a presentation recently on... on doing bug reporting. Anything to add uh, on top of uh, Elena's great answer uh, already? Oh, no, no, the, the same. Reproduce, uh, the way to reproduce is most important thing. Uh, everything else is, could be important, but only to us to do the same, the reproduce. Okay, so now I have a question which is uh, going to be the same question for everybody. Um, and perhaps you, Sonia, are already talking, could be the first person answering it. It's an innocent little question on the release schedule, which is the topic of this entire manifest. So now we have one major release every year, such as 10.5, roughly a year, and one minor release, such as 10.5.8, every quarter, plus some unscheduled emergency releases. So from your perspective, everybody can answer only from their own perspective, is that too little? Is that too much? Or is it just right? What's, what's Sanya's opinion? Uh, 
it's it's okay <laughs> because uh, one is in other is out so it's a number of uh, releases we are doing like from version to version is more or less the same uh, maybe not okay we would be better do less but okay it's for our uh, users make some variety to choose from mm, but for me uh, one per quarter release and one per, per year is is what, what what at least so far it's the best mm -hmm. is uh, elena of the same opinion I don't mind us uh, releasing every year. I think it's okay on many different reasons, but I find it really difficult that we maintain every release for such a long time. I would much prefer if we had, say, one release which uh, a long-term uh, support uh, supported release and maybe a few releases which are short-term kind of like Ubuntu does. So mm -hmm. it, it, it would allow us to focus more, uh, focus the testing more on um, specific releases. Mm -hmm. so, so the frequency as such is good, but the duration of, of like uh, serving every single major release for long, that's, that's something you would want to, to discontinue a bit earlier. So what, what does uh, Ian, say from my perspective the release schedule seems to work quite well um it can become a bit of a wish list where everyone would love to have a new major release every month packed full of all the latest new features so it's a it's matching the capacity to deliver this and to create these new features with what's actually achievable but i think the frequency works quite nicely i mean you can argue with more resources, uh, MariaDB can add more new features into the major releases, um, differentiate them from each other. Uh, but given the, the available resources, I think the frequency works quite well. I was also interested to hear, um, I think it was in Kamal's talk when Yukai asked him the question about, uh, do we need to focus more on stability or do we need to focus more on, on new features? And his answer was, as far as he's concerned, MariaDB is very stable and he would like to see more new features. And that answer has sort of been coming across to that point of view more recently because being inside MariaDB, you see you know, all the bug reports, all the problems, and you realize uh, it, it looks like a bit of a train smash sometimes from the inside. But actually from the outside, most people aren't affected by many of these issues. Things are quite stable. Um, they would like to see new features so that's interesting to see i mean there's this concept of 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 multiple nines of uptime you, you can maybe apply a similar concept to to the impact of a bug report here's a crashing bug it looks terrible and obviously for the user you know, it's, it's critical it must be fixed but perhaps it's only a bug that affects one user out of all the millions out there so it has a very very small impact and um it's hard to get a, it's hard to put that in perspective sometimes seeing the reports coming in. Mm -hmm. So external perspective, Giuseppe, what's your take on this? I'm not very much affected by that. I try to keep my tool updated so that it can deal with uh, most, most of the versions, provide that I get some advance notice on what is going to happen. The, the only problem I would like to avoid is that uh, there is a new release and the day after I'm, I, I get bug reports because uh, for some new reasons, DB Deployer doesn't work with uh, MySQL 8.0.12 uh, uh, or uh, MariaDB uh, 10.5.1, something like that uh, happened, has happened. So I have an agreement with uh, Oracle, for example. They send me advance notice of what is going to happen so I can, uh, I can take measures uh, and uh, check that the, the tool works with uh, the new releases. I get also a preview of the, of the release so I can... Uh, I can make sure that uh, it's it's working as expected. 
so far uh, I have not had the, such uh, uh, such agreement with MariaDB and also the fact that it doesn't have Mac passage, uh, packages is is a bit of annoyance but it could be it could be overcome so I think Vicenzo you should be the next person answering and also addressing what Giuseppe just said so uh, while we're not yet providing buildbot releases for for uh, OSX that hopefully it's coming up soon, but, but I believe that the, the preview type of thing is done by BuildBot, our side. And, and also, uh, Vicenzo, don't forget us answering the same question about frequency yourself, but please, please first comment on what Giuseppe said. All right, so lots of things to remember. I'll start with Giuseppe's uh, first. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, we are working on our new BuildBot, which is buildbot.moneydb.org where we are um, building uh, more than 80 something combinations of MariaDB builds. Uh, all the builds are stored uh, at ci.mariadb.org. So when uh, we are getting close to release, there is the opportunity for you to download the packages that are going to be used for a release. Um, logistically, we probably would, wa would want to let you know that this is probably the branch that you should look at. But all the packages we have are visible and you can download them. Now, uh, going back to Mac OS, we have a problem that we don't yet have the hardware to build it uh, periodically. We are looking to fix that. Um, we have done work to make sure that uh, MariaDB compiles on OS X. So uh, we have packages that can be installed. They're not DMGs, they are PKGs. Uh, but they, sh they should work. Uh, I hope uh, uh, we can try out the DB deployer and see if there's something we need to fix there as well. But the, we, we want to publish them, we just didn't get uh, the hardware ready for that. And your final question uh, was, what's your own opinion about the frequency once a year for major and once a quarter for minor? Right, so about uh, releases, um, I am happy with the quarterly release. Uh, schedule because um, it frees up a bit of development time between releases. Otherwise, you're just doing releases all the time. However, I think we can re reduce the burden by first making sure that every potential commit is releasable. So we're working towards protected branches to make sure that no tests fail uh, for within the master branches. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, personally, I think uh, the current development version could have more frequent releases. So we are working on 10.6 now, and we have not yet had a nice uh, release for 10.6, which I think is something we could do. Mm -hmm. So uh, by design, I left you, Sergey, last. So. Uh, what, what's your take and perhaps a summary of, of your comments towards what others, others think, but very importantly, your own view about the frequency and your reasoning behind it? Well, <clears throat> I first uh, thought about what I've just heard about uh, and DB deploys issue. I think that any agreement when, you know, via Oracle notifies him is a little bit fragile. Uh, it's GitHub, he could, it should be possible to configure, I don't know, Travis or whatever CI he's using, just to take every or daily MariaDB and MS. You cannot do it for MySQL, okay? You can do it for MariaDB, you can take daily builds and test against the latest DB deploy release and get the warning as early as we push it. And then either fix DB deploy or complain to us that we did something wrong because testing the pre-release might be a little bit too late. You can do it without, yeah, I realized you cannot do it with MySQL because they don't push, they close the code, you'll only see the releases. But for MariaDB, you can just test practically every push every day. Anyway, uh, about release scheduler. So one year is a compromise between, well, users want to see features as early as possible. And we also we want to get features as soon as possible out, but we also want to have every major release to have a lot of features and those are, if we release every, one release every 10 years, it would have lots of new features, but 
Fiji would have to wait a lot until they get released. So one year is kind of a compromise between that. I didn't hear users complaining about that, so that's apparently working well. We cannot do minor releases less than quarterly because it was explained in my talk. So they're tied to Oracle and MySQL releases. So as soon as MySQL releases out, out users and distributions are urging us to have MRADB releases, all the security issues fixed. That's why we time our releases to be immediately after MySQL releases, to have security fixes ported from MySQL and released as soon as possible. So we cannot do it less than quarterly. We can do it more than quarterly. We used to do it monthly. But again, it's a compromise between how much time we spend on doing releases. And again, and how my how often users want releases, those releases, how often users actually want to upgrade. If you would do daily releases, nobody would want to upgrade MariaDB daily. And as we don't hear, or at least I don't hear complaints about users that quarterly is too unfrequently we do, for, we do quarterly. With uh, always green branches and automatic mergers and more automation in the new build board, we should be able to do more frequent releases without, well, spending much of the development time on that. But again, it depends on how often users want them. And so right. far it looks like quarterly works very well. Makes, makes good sense to me. So then I have a combination of two questions. Uh, what should we do better and what should we do less? So the question, what should we do better? I mean, uh, it's from the perspective of what can we do to make the life of our users easier? So what do you think that the user base is struggling with now? How, how can we inform them better, communicate, listen, share? But uh, since we are not looking now at uh, lots of new resources, we also should do something else less. Uh, so uh, what, what could we perhaps focus less on? So if you can have a, a, a balanced comment on uh, put more effort on this, but listen, uh, I'm aware of that in that area that you probably don't need to do so, so much work on. And oh, why don't I put Vicencio on the spot first? Um, all right, so I, I, I'm not entirely certain what you would be doing less because that's it's hard to figure out what you should uh, stop doing. But it is. Um, I think um, we should really focus more on uh, letting people know about the developments of within MariaDB because every time I go to a conference anywhere, I am I'm surprised by people not even knowing features uh, of features in end of life releases. So I've got questions from users about roles which were in initially introduced in 10.0. So I think it's very important we uh, increase- We should inform people about the new features in 10.0 which are not so new. Yes. Um, so I think we have a lot to go uh, in uh, explaining to us all the good things that MariaDB is doing. So we should definitely do more of that. And I think this panel is one step in the right direction there. Now, uh, what we should be doing less, that is, uh, that is tricky. Um, I, I think don't expect any good answers to the other question, to the less one. But Ian, what's your take? I think I'm also going to struggle with the what should we do less of. Um, I'll see if anything comes to mind. But as far as what we should do better, um, it ties into Vicente's comment about people not knowing about, about roles in 10.0. My, my main focus is on the, the documentation of MariaDB. That's, that's an area I would love to see uh, improved because it's, it's mostly me working uh, there alone, and I get quite excited when somebody comes in. So anybody from the community can contribute to our knowledge base. It's available under a free license, and I normally get very excited when somebody does. So please, anyone watching, feel free to, to jump in there. The documentation is also more than just writing about it somewhere. I mean, quite a lot of features that I come across or, or fixes, there's, a, there's a, a comment in a JIRA report and that's now documented, but it's actually not because no one is going to, very few people are going to go to that level of detail to find out what was changed. <clears throat> so it needs to be you know, 
on the release notes. It needs to be integrated in all the pages where that topic could be relevant. There need to be links to this new feature. Um, and then outside of MariaDB as well, on various forums and things or anywhere else that it's useful, we need to uh, get people to know about these new features. So that's one area I would like to see uh, substantially improved. Um, the other is in, which I guess ties into DB Deployer working with our not yet fully existent Mac builds is, is integration with, with uh, third parties. So we do our internal testing and that's all great, but, but we don't have that much integration with outside communities. And um, for example, it was a PHP issue. I know we've started now testing internally for that. So I think collaborating with various communities to help test their particular environment and to make sure that MariaDB works with them is something we can do together. I mean, we won't be able to do it just on our own, but uh, by talking to the right people and, and sharing resources, we can get better at that. Mm -hmm. So Giuseppe, perhaps it's your turn now and you can also, if you have any questions for the other panelists, you can list them at the same point in time so that they, they can get time to think about it. Uh, so, regarding what MariaDB should do less, uh, for example, sending me from mariadb.org to mariadb.com whenever I download something. Um, about the, what MariaDB should do more, I have been asking for a minimal package, uh, which um, I managed to do with Oracle and with Percona. So both they have released the minimal packages that are very useful when you are dealing with, uh, uh, for example, containers where you need uh, a small package or where when uh, you use a package like DB Deployer where you need a small thing to download quickly if you want to download a, 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 a specific version for uh, a short purpose. So I would like uh, MariaDB to join the club and uh, organize uh, a set of uh, minimal packages that can be downloaded uh, quickly. Right now, every package of MariaDB costs something like uh, 2.5 uh, gigabytes. Uh, and it, it would be nice if we had something that was only 40 megabytes, mm -hmm. like Oracle and Percona. Um, another suggestion that I would like to, to do is that uh, I, whenever I go to conferences, I, I saw that people are using the B deployer with MariaDB for several purposes. And I was wondering, uh, whether it would be a good idea for MariaDB QA to insert the tool into the regular uh, testing uh, suite. It doesn't have to be the, the kind of um, test that uh, um, DB Deployer does internally. That is something like uh, 22,000 tests that uh, span for three hours. But a simple test like, uh, let's try to deploy this new version of MariaDB to see if something is breaking would be useful for both parties. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, Elian, do you want to comment on that? On uh, DB Deployer specifically? Both, yeah, can, both. Uh, well, I'll start with that. Yeah, we can try to do that, but uh, as Sergey already mentioned, the other way uh, to do it uh, could be that uh, Giuseppe can pull uh, MariaDB uh, server from GitHub regularly and it can be tested this way because realistically we have very uh, limited capacity of internal testing and we would very much appreciate the help from the community, especially if there is already the tool and there are already tests, so all uh, is needed is that uh, the MariaDB code, which is readily available at GitHub, is pulled automatically, right, and uh, built and trained regularly. 
So yes, we could probably do it internally, but also we could ask the community uh, to help with that uh, while we uh, internally focus on something else. So I, I will, can... by the way, talk to Daniel Black about this. He's now in, in Canberra sleeping, so they, that's why he couldn't join. But he's very much looking into community CI and, and uh, for him to reach out to you, Giuseppe, would be a, a good idea to see whether there is, whether we should even do both, uh, both things, uh, both Sergei's idea and your idea. But uh, sorry for disturbing you, Elena, uh, your idea about what we should do better and what we should do less. Right, but it, it's actually very much in line with uh, my uh, perception of what we should do uh, more in terms of testing, obviously, my area is uh, quality control and testing, so I'm thinking about that. And it's uh, these two questions, what we should do more and less, are very much combined when it comes to testing, because we have, again, we have limited capacity, and whenever we want to extend something, we have to shrink something else. And uh, what I would like to do more uh, much more than we do now is testing MariaDB server in uh, different realistic setups, which are used uh, by the community, by the user base, uh, such as combinations uh, with different third party applications uh, and setups like WordPress, whatever. Uh, because uh, we do a lot of internal testing but there are numerous uh, uh, configurations which people use widely uh, in the world, but we never test them and never in, even think about them. Uh, for example, uh, some of you probably heard about the recent issue with the third party connector. And even if we tested the, uh, this release for, I don't know, a month, we would have never found this uh, problem just because we didn't have the tests. We do now, uh, now when uh, this problem was discovered, uh, the new build bot uh, was extended and uh, some third party connector tests uh, have been added there and we will probably add even more later. But that's just an example of what we're seriously lacking. And uh, while doing that, what I am planning to do less is that this uh, uh, feature integration tests, which I mentioned before, which take about 90% of uh, my current uh, test setups, they seem to be very efficient. They find a lot of bugs, uh, new bugs and old bugs, but the reality is these bugs probably affect very uh, little part of our user base. Like Ian mentioned before, they seem to be important crashing bugs or problems, but probably very few users actually do what these test, tests do. So I think we can do a little less of it and we, we will still have a sufficient amount of uh, such bugs found, more, probably more than we have the capacity to fix. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elena. So uh, I think we have uh, Sanya and Sergey yet to answer. So Sanya first. Okay, as, as I'm a developer, uh, so my main concern is to make more bug fixes because uh, even if we test a lot, produce a lot of bug fixes, but if they will not be uh, fixed, it's kind of useless activity. Uh, so, and of course, I could say the tests and uh, documentation information is also very important. It's never uh, too, too small amount of this. Uh, I couldn't say something about less. <laughs> okay. Sergey, what's your uh, take? Um, when you said about something doing more and less, so oh, well, I'm an engineer, so my first thought was about what we should do less, about doing less, you know. There's many recurring tasks that are so easy to automate, or maybe not so easy to automate, but they still should be automated so that we could do something more creative instead. 
And this is what Vicente was talking about in the new billboard that would help us to, well, that we should stop constantly, well, not constantly, well, periodically fixing broken main trees because the new billboard in GitHub will ensure that they're never broken. They could help us doing repeatable manual rebases of and merges of bug fixes automatically. That's a pretty long checklist of manual things uh, we need to do, well, our release manager needs to do to do a release. There was probably a talk about that. And some of that could probably have to be automated as well. So that release could be not as easy as click on a button, but as close to it as possible. Then I, uh, repeating what Yelena has said, so, but again, from our mind and signer point of view, we should probably fix more bugs that actually affect real user case scenarios. And if that will take time from fixing bugs that nobody cares about, then, well, so be it. I would still prefer to fix all the bugs, but given the choice between bugs that affect users and bugs that doesn't affect anybody, given time to fix only one of those, I would prefer to fix the bug that affects the real users. So we will probably need to do get better at, well, distinguishing which bug is which and finding those affecting users' bug first and fixing them first. Cool. So uh, I was to ask all my generic questions, and I'm very thankful for them, but this might have caused you to get further questions that you would like to ask each other. So now the, the floor is open for anybody who wishes to ask another panelist something uh, as prompted by the discussion so far. I feel very much like at home in Finland, everybody is is silent, which means that either everybody is happy or doesn't think that their own questions is smart enough. I'll give you another chance. Pretend that you're not Finns. You should probably help us with that, with questions. Well, one right. question could be, uh, how, do we, uh, how do we check the impact of a bug? I mean, we have one mechanism in Jira, which is the votes and the comments. So if, if an issue has many votes, we can understand that it's people are watching it, people are interested in it. Um, but I don't think it's that widely used. So there's uh, how can we how can we get a better grip on the impact of an issue or the, or the desire for a new feature to be implemented? Yeah, that's a great question, but who can answer it? Does anybody have a way to to measure the impact of a bug other than good judgment in a case-by-case -case basis? I don't think so. I, I think sometimes uh, when you even start fixing the bug, it's not clear what impact it could have. Of course, if it's not like half of your user base is complaining, but if it's security issue, if it's really security issue or whatever, sometimes it's clear, sometimes not. So. I don't think that's... Uh, well, there's an extreme case that happens every two, three years when we release, well, uh, when we make a release and it's broken in a way that users start complaining even before we actually announced it, as soon as it hits repositories. We get multiple complaints on mailing list on all the messen possible messengers in Jira numerous people reporting the same bug independently, so that duplicates. This is shows a uh, very strong impact on users. Well, this is actually a reason when we immediately release uh, fixed binaries. So it's not a particular criteria of us doing any, something good, but it's uh, just an extreme case of when we get a lot of feedback about the impact. Usually we don't get that. So it's just a, uh, Yes, but it mainly concerns regressions, uh, very fresh re regressions. When many people at once encounter the same the, the same issue, they don't really even uh, try to to search for already existing bugs. They just keep reporting it because 
it's fresh, it's, uh, it's a big problem uh, right now. But uh, when it comes to all the barks, I don't think we really have any better tool than voting that Ian mentioned, but our users don't know about it. Uh, so I guess we need uh, somehow to make sure that uh, they're informed about it and they use it uh, more widely whenever they find a bug report which uh, they are affected by. Uh, they should use this voting mechanism or at least comment on the bug so that we know that uh, there are people interested in it. Because we do pay attention when uh, several users comment on an internally reported issue, we prioritize it higher than it used to be initially. It is important. Good comment, good, good thinking. So. Uh, last chance to ask other questions uh, from the other panelists. I do have a question for uh, probably the best target is Giuseppe here. Um, so Giuseppe, what do you think of the selection of downloads that you have now for MariaDB? Uh, I know you're, you mentioned that they are a bit big. Uh, we, we are working on making them smaller and I think the newest releases are uh, 300 something megabytes. Um, but we now have tarballs, we have RPM packages, we have dev packages. Um, do you have any preference for any one of those? Is there something, some other form you would want us to publish packages in? I only use uh, tarballs, so I'm not very much interested in, in the other uh, formats. Um, what i mostly concerned is the size of the contents. So once I unpack the tarball, I usually need to remove a lot of things that I don't need, like the, the MySQL test uh, directory, which is huge, which I would need if I were developing a, a feature for MariaDB or MySQL, but I don't need in, uh, in this case. So for example, Oracle has decided long time ago to split the package. So you get the test suite in a separate tarball, which makes the tarball much uh, smaller. And on top of that, they made also the minimal tarballs. So the thing that I, uh, I, I don't really have much choice at the moment uh, uh, with MariaDB uh, packages. I only need the, the tarball specific for the, uh, for the operating system that I'm using, which is either Linux, either, either Ubuntu or CentOS. So my, my choice is limited. You can, of course, download RPM or Debian packages and extract binaries from there. Uh, I could, but why should I? I mean... Uh, to get smaller downloads, avoid uh, embedded, avoid MySQL test, avoid all the stuff you don't need. As I said, I, I really need to, to make tests for DB Deployer using the, the regular tarballs. I couldn't say somebody who complains that uh, it doesn't work with MariaDB uh, uh, and, and tell them to, to download the, the RPM, extract the, the tarballs. And of, then, course, no, of course not. Of course not. It's something that uh, should happen automatically. Yeah, but... For this reason, I, I was suggesting to, to have uh, um, minimal tarballs. The point is, uh, I'm not a regular user of, my, of uh, MariaDB. I use it only when there is a, a trouble with a new version with the DB deployer. And this is why I try to, to update my DB deployer in such a way that it works with new versions, but I usually get uh, uh, notified that uh, when such a problem arises. I'm not going to, to check actively every, every month that uh, something is changed and something needs uh, to be addressed. Okay, thank you, Giuseppe, and, and uh, I think thank you all of the panelists. This was the panel discussion of the MariaDB server, Minifest December 2020 edition. We wanted to get feedback. We did get feedback. So 
thanks especially also not just to Giuseppe but to, to Elena who came for the panel and, and all the panelists who have also always presented. So we now have some homework to do and thanks for, for attending. Until next time.